We found the plug. We checked the coil for spark, not the plug. Check your plugs, people. What's up, YouTube? We're Mini Metal Fab, and today we're back again with our Stage 4 Predator 212 non-hemi, and we're gonna be installing that on our Baja Warrior, and we're gonna see how fast the thing goes, see what kind of top speed we get, see how kind of acceleration, and just see what the thing does. We're just gonna be throwing the holes on the battery box just to keep any build up from happening. We're through, but we're slipping. <laughs> there we go. We're going to do one more over here. Do over there. Do a couple of them there. Yeah. The box, if any dirt goes up in there. Because when we were down at Busted Beef, it sort of got vacuum locked in place. holes in it let the water drain out well that's good next we're gonna be moving take off the catch can yes. so we can drain it and clean it and clean the filter and then we'll relocate it to somewhere better that's too too low for the motor it's too close yeah too close and too low it puts too much pressure into it just blows all the oil right back out all right so got the catch can off we're gonna clean it While Brandon's over there setting on my old catch can, I'm going to be mounting up the motor onto the bike frame. Alright, had to take the exhaust off real quick just so I could uh, get the motor on the frame a lot easier. Grab our solid aluminum mountain blocks. The tall one goes in the back, and then the shorter one in the front. We use three eighth bolts instead of the one quarter bolts that you normally use because they're stronger. You can tighten them down better, and they don't snap or strip so easily. We got these nice machined aluminum blocks underneath the spacers for the motor. They help absorb some of the vibrations and they raise it up for the torque converter to fit. Torque converter plates going on. You gotta make sure you get the right thread. Cause there is two different threads for these bolts. They're fine and the coarse thread. So make sure you finger thread them in to make sure they go in easily before you just torque them down with an impact or something. strip it out that would be unfortunate you have to drill it out and retap it for a different bolt thread and all this stuff be a big pain things good with the vent breathers up there and everything now oh man it's a beautiful motor yeah hopefully it performs good I'm taking the 10 tooth block off in there and putting this 12 tooth on right here for more top speed. So we got 43 on the back, 12 on the front. This thing's gonna be geared for upwards of 80 miles an hour, which is gonna be nuts on this thing. Quick and easy job. Just pull off the old sprocket, pull the key out. So 
Next, we're gonna put our chain on and align the motor. Off with the 10 tooth, starting to get worn as you can see. So, how shiny it is, I got some chain wearing away, make, sharpening it. It's crazy. Never really seen that happen to a sprocket before. Got some all the sand in there from Busco Beach, riding around grinding through the chain eats away your sprockets and stuff. That's why it's important to lube your chain and clean them, especially after you ride in like sandy, dirty kind of terrain. So we're getting those maps on with the chain. Alright, so we just got the front snugged up and tightened down. We'll check alignment and see how it looks. That looks pretty good if you ask me. So you're gonna take your tensioners there and you're gonna turn them out. So that way it's all the way in. Put your chain on and then you wanna take them and you wanna do even turns on both. Some frames have these notches here. You can kind of go by, but not every frame has that. So you just wanna go count, go by turns and then if you do one turn on that side, you want to do one turn on this side. You go back and forth, bringing the whole thing back. So you know it's nice and straight. And you can look at your tire tread and your frame and see your tire tread looks angled or not. And same with your sprocket. And if they look all straight and in line, you know you're good. Just going back and forth on each side. Checking both the straightness of the chain on the engine and then the wheel of the frame. Alright, now, now we'll check to see how straight it is. So now we're gonna retighten the rear wheel. Now that the chain's nice and straight, tension, we're gonna tighten it. And when you tighten your wheel, it will change the tension on your chain. So after you tighten it, you wanna check it again, make sure it's not too tight. You want about a half inch play from rest up, down about half an inch. So that looks about perfect. So we just got the motor tightened down, chains on, tension, the lines, time to do the catch can, throttles on as well, nice and snappy.
Was that a fireball at the back? Probably. <laughs> All right, well, we got it to run. We're gonna work on some more tomorrow, so we'll have, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, we're back today. And so we're getting the gas tank situated. I found this, I forgot I had this, but we're gonna put this on. This is a hand spun aluminum gas tank from Go Power Sports. And normally you have to drill a hole in the cap for a vent breather because there's no vents in this. So if you just hook a fuel line up and go, your fuel won't drain out. So I welded this barb on here that I made and that is going to be your vent breather and drill the hole through the center. And then my coworker gave me this actually, that's why it's powder coated with this uh, hammer paint, which doesn't look bad, but I was gonna sandblast this whole thing back to aluminum and then polish it. But just to sandblast this cap right here took about 45 minutes. So this will take about all day to sandblast and that is just not worth it. It's really durable, strong paint. So I made these little tabs right here for it that bolt into the back. And we're gonna take them, we're gonna weld them onto the frame right about here, something like that. And the gas tank will sit right there, just like so in the frame. So it should be mint. Looks good. Perfect size for this thing. All right, so we're currently porting the exhaust out and the exhaust gasket, because when you port your head, you want to open up your gaskets and the exhaust too, or else all that head work you just did was for nothing. So you open up your gaskets to match the head like this. So when it goes on, if everything clears all the way around, you don't feel a lip in there at all when you drag your finger out. It shouldn't catch anywhere. If it catches, you gotta take more out. Like we're still catching right in the corner right there. You gotta take a little bit more out there and that'll be good. Just got done porting the exhaust and the gaskets, reinstalling the exhaust. Now I just got the gas tank on. A new fuel line. Shut off valve in the middle just to be safe. Looking good. We couldn't figure out why this thing wouldn't run. We got it to run and then it stalled out the other night and we couldn't get it to run since then. We were like, what in the world? Check for spark, everything's working. We we're like, what in the world? We found the plug. We checked the coil for spark, not the plug. Check your plugs, people. So we just got the bikes together. We're about to go take them out for a test ride and see how it does. We need a new carb really bad. This carb is messed up. Busco Beast destroyed it. This thing really is good.
just got a little more pep. Thank you for watching as you saw we got it to run it's pretty fast but it needs a car badly so that will be the next thing we're doing to this is a new car because good news is it's running bad news is it doesn't like to run still yeah it um, runs it's good but it's not it's not good like when we had it on my carburetor it ran amazing but on this carburetor the 28 it's a little bit much for it and it's not jetted right and it's not right air fuel ratio and busco beach destroyed it so we're just gonna get a whole new car, a 26 this time probably. Size it down a little bit so it's a little easier to dial in the air fuel ratio and then it has a little bit more bottom end. And yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Um, it helps. And if you wanna see more, go follow us on TikTok at Mini Metal Fab or Instagram. Uh, stay safe riding.